Hello everyone, in the last video of the Windows Server 2016 Mega series, we configured a failover cluster to have uh, two roles, a general purpose file server role and a scale out file server role. Of course, these two roles uh, both use two different disks that are resources in the cluster. And in this video, we are going to encrypt those two disks to increase, of course, our security posture. And before we get into all of the PowerShell commands to use BitLocker to encrypt the cluster disks, let's first uh, go to Active Directory and Group Policy Management to create a uh, group policy that will configure BitLocker to do this. So first, let's go to Active Directory. And here I want to create a organizational unit where I will place my new policy so I don't uh, place it on all my servers. And I'm going to name it Encrypt. And in this OU, I'm going to move my two uh, cluster nodes. So these are the only servers that you will need. In case your cluster is a two node cluster, you only need the nodes. You don't need also the cluster object. And we are going to move it in the encrypt OU. So now with uh, this done in Active Directory, let's create the group policy object. Of course, we want it to be linked to encrypt and we will call it BitLocker, for example. Let's edit this policy and I'll show you exactly what you need to set. Go into Policies, Administrative Templates in the Windows Components and then we have to find BitLocker Drive Encryption and in our case, we are only interested in settings for fixed data drives. And the last option is what you need to configure. And actually, there's not really too much to do. Just enable it. And uh, most of the things are already done. I like to set also this uh, option that will start the uh, encryption process only after the uh, decryption key is saved in Active Directory, so you are sure that you can recover your files once encryption uh, starts. Just uh, press OK, and we are done with the group policy part. This was all we needed to do. Now we can return to our PowerShell code and actually uh, configure everything. Now, of course, to use BitLocker, the first thing we should do is install BitLocker. And by installing BitLocker, we also get an extra benefit uh, that the server will be restarted. So also the group policy that we just created will be applied. So let's install it uh, on each node at a time, because normally you would do this since we are talking about a cluster. You don't want both of your cluster nodes to go down at the same time. Then let's uh, do it like this. We first install it on the A node, let it restart, and then we are going to install it on the B node. With the A node restarted, we can move on to the B node. So we run basically the same command, which will install BitLocker and then uh, automatically restart the server if it is needed. So if you haven't used the uh, add Windows feature like this, when the exit code specifies that a restart is required and you use minus restart, then the server will restart. And after the B node is also online, uh, let's uh, we can continue. The next thing, uh, in uh, my case at least, is that uh, I have to suspend the two disks that are used for my cluster roles. This is because you cannot encrypt disks that are in use. So for the cluster share volume, I will use this command to suspend it. And of course, first I need to 
you go on one of my nodes with PowerShell remoting. Now it's much better. Let's run the command to suspend the cluster share volume. So now this is suspended and this command will be used to suspend our normal uh, cluster disk. The one that is used for the general purpose file server. And this is now also suspended. Great. Uh, now, the next thing is to enable BitLocker for our two disks. So for the scale-out file server disk, we use the mount point. And this uh, command is done. Now let's also enable BitLocker for the E drive, which is the general purpose file server disk. And this is also done. Uh, next, we have to save the two uh, protector IDs for our two disks in uh, these variables. And with the two protectors saved in uh, these variables, we are going to back them up. So first one and, and second one. Uh, next set of commands will be run directly on one of the cluster nodes and these commands are used to let the cluster object get the recovery keys from Active Directory and decrypt the disks itself. So we don't, when we restart the server, we will not need to do anything. So I will jump on my uh, FSO1A server and run these commands. Okay, so the first command will actually form the cluster object name. And then the next two commands will let it uh, access the recovery key for both disks. I'll run the three commands one after the other. And now all that remains to be done, uh, at least for the primary part, is to resume uh, usage of the two disks. So this is for the cluster shell volume disk and this is for the normal cluster disk. And this was it with enabling BitLocker. Now what I want to also show you is how you can also see the recovery keys, of course, if you have access to them. And to do this, it's actually pretty simple. On a server or computer that has Active Directory users and computers, you can also install this feature. And it will add an extra tab when uh, viewing computer objects. So it's done. Let me show you. I have to, I think, close this. Now let me open it again. And if I go to encrypt and go on the FSO1A, because this is the one that holds the recovery keys, you can see that uh, now you have all this information available to you. Of course, keep in mind, I can see this information because I'm logged on with the domain admin, uh, depending on the user you use and the, of course, the permissions you have in Active Directory, you may not be able to see it. But this was it for encrypting uh, uh, cluster disks. If it was uh, useful for you, please like and share the video. Also subscribe if you're not uh, subscribed. And thanks a lot for watching.